a warm greetings in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The topic for today's meditation is Know the Grief and Get Rid of Grief. And portion I have taken for today's meditation is from the Gospel according to Mark chapter 14 verses 32 to 42. Verses th- verse 34 says, He said to them, Sorrow in my heart is so great that it almost crushes me. Let's bow our head and pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, thank you for giving this blessed day to us. Lord, let your word give us all hope and salvation during this Lenten season. Submitting all people in Christ in your hand, may this Lenten season be a fruitful to all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In this portion, we see Jesus, Peter and John in the Garden of Gethsemane. Here we see Jesus in, is in most terrific situation of sorrow and grief of his upcoming suffering. First thing I want to share with you all is receiving comfort when we don't feel to like it. Receiving comfort when we don't like feel to like it. Even when we don't like, we ever emerge from the lows of grief and loss. The right attitude can open the way for hope and get moving again. By forgiving others and ourselves and by placing faith in God, even when we don't understand, we can adjust your attitude, bolster us in our grief. It's crucial that we acknowledge our feelings. Feelings are neither right nor wrong. Having them doesn't make you unspiritual. No one experienced greater experience emotional pain than Jesus. My soul is overwhelmed to the point of death. He knew the feeling that he was going to die, yet he didn't hide or deny his feelings or condemn himself for having them. Denial only amplify emotions. Acknowledge your feeling and choose God's will regardless of your feeling and he will strengthen you to handle our grief. It is also essential that we rely in God's word throughout our grieving process. God's word, wisdom and comfort for those dealing with stress, anxiety, loneliness, anger, bitterness, depression and suicidal thoughts. His presence, his word and our connection through our prayer with him are some of the primary way that he comfort us. Like in Psalm 30 verse 5 says, His anger lasts only a moment, his goodness for a lifetime. Tears may flow in the night, but joy comes in the morning. Second thing I, that I want to share is praying over discomfort feelings. Praying over discomfort feelings. In this portion, we see Jesus is praying to his heavenly father about the feelings that he got. In verse 36, it says, And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. In his request, if possible, we see the natural limit of Jesus being fully human his time on earth. But then Jesus shows us the importance word we will ever rest in and live by as believers. The word must define a prayer life, yet not what I will, but what you will. True discipleship is surrounding all things, goals, agendas, plans, comfort, convenience, safety, finances, relationship, life. To follow him for the sake of Christ and his kingdom. And Jesus here show, uh, shows us how that should permeate our prayer life. In times of trouble, triumph, decision, confusion, doubt, conflict and everything in between, the constant prayer of our heart and everything must be that God's will be done as we lay down our will. I know that his will is perfect always for the good of 
those who love him never harm us but to accomplish his good purpose our affection for the lord must be shown by following his direction jesus remind his followers to stay awake all at all times to be ready and to be on guard so our heart aren't weighed down Jesus battle in Gethsemane was not for nothing he who conquer the darkest shadow show us how to battle through our own suffering and live in the light may good god bless us all in throughout this lengthy season have a blessed holy saturday